And I need to get down inside of me if I'm going to continue living with a sense of victory. Now, now listen to what I mean by this. Y'all know what victory is, right? That's when everything's going right. You're winning all your battles. But I need a sense of victory. You need a sense of victory. That's called faith. It's a sense in you that what you're doing and being led into is going to work and prosper. It's just inside of you. It's like you can't explain it. What is faith? Who can really explain faith? Faith is when God puts in your knower the ability to know something in a way that you can't you can't not believe it. It's faith. And so, in John chapter 21, Jesus has already died, been raised from the dead. He's visited with his, with his disciples a few times. And this is his last time that he's going to be with them. It's his very last time. And the Bible says that Jesus... Let me read it to you. Verse, 21, uh, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. I, I think maybe this is a little much for the music. I love it. The preacher can preach better with music. Y'all understand that? But I want y'all to be able to hear clearly. In this way, say in this way, Jesus showed himself. Now, how many ways has Jesus showed himself to you? How many of you have in some way in your life seen Jesus? Look around the room. There's a lot of us that have. Uh, the world would love to look in this room and see you, and they'd get a big laugh out of that, right? Because they don't believe that you see Jesus. But you do. You see the Lord in many ways. And the Bible says this is Jesus' last opportunity with them, and it says in this way He showed Himself to them. I'm going to make this really brief, so if you guys want to just sit there for just a moment... That's okay. He said, in this way, he showed himself. So this is Jesus' final opportunity to show his disciples some things that apparently were so important to him that they needed, uh, they needed to be, be uh, reiterated before he left. And there are just two things. I've preached this chapter before, and I've preached it in a way where I think I think the Lord had me pull out seven things that Jesus showed them. But today, I only want to touch on two. Just two things that Jesus showed them before he, his final ascension. You ready for this? It's really simple. Look with me. Look what happened. Ch chapter 21 again, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tib Tiberias. And in this way, he showed them. I think if you turn the monitors off up here, you'll stop that. In this way, he showed them himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel and Cana of Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of the, of the disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going to go with you. And they went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. So here's the scenario was this. Jesus has died. He's been resurrected, raised from the dead. And he has met with them some, but they're kind of discouraged and not sure what they're going to do. And so Peter just says, look, I'm, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I know. I'm going back to what's comfortable. What I thought was going to happen in my life with Jesus, obviously, is past. And, he, and, and so he's just, he doesn't know what he's going to do now. So he says, I'm just going to go back to fishing. We, we tend to fall back on what's easy when things aren't going the way we think they ought to go. We just fall back on what's easy. And so Peter said, I'm going fishing. So everybody else said, what the heck? We'll go with you. Let's go fishing. So they went fishing. And, and the Bible says they toiled all night long. They worked all night long. They struggled. They tried to do what they do in their own flesh. And it wasn't working well for them now. They'd been successful for many, many years as fishermen. And this time it's not working. And the reason was, I believe, because but two, twofold. One reason is because God had moved them into something else now. They weren't who they used to be. They just didn't know it yet. Okay? It hadn't dawned on them what was invested in them. What virtue He had already placed within them that could be poured out on behalf of others. So they went back to what they knew 
go fishing. They went fishing. They couldn't catch anything. And the second reason, I believe, is simply because Jesus wanted to show himself to them. And this is what's cool. I love the fact that he says, in this way he showed himself. Everybody say himself. The lesson of the Bible is Jesus. Everything we learn when we read the Bible is Jesus. He's the lesson. He is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh and came and dwelt among us. He is the lesson. So when Jesus teaches us something, what He teaches us, Roger, is what? All you need to know. And that's Jesus. So he said, in this way he showed himself to them. They're fishing, they caught nothing. And verse 4 is the first little point I want to make, out, make, make, make with you this morning. Watch this. It says, but when the morning had now come. Of course, they've been, they've been fishing all night. And when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. First lesson. First lesson. Here's Jesus. All night long. Through their season of dryness. Their realization that life's not what it used to be. And may never be again. Because fishing's not for us anymore. We've given everything up. We're trying to go back to do it again. And it's not working. And now I'm left with nothing. I've toiled and toiled and toiled and I've worked and I've tried and, I've, and it's not working. And here they sit and they're like, what now? And the Bible says, when morning came, everybody say morning. The Bible says joy comes in the morning. If you're my age, you fully understand that. <laughs> anyway, joy comes in the morning. You're in your night season. You're in that point in your life where things are not clear. Here's the, here's the thing. What about the night? There's a scripture in the Old Testament. I preached a sermon years ago called What About the Night? There, in one of the Old Testament prophets, uh, the watchman stood up. And the Bible says the watchman arose and he said, What about the night? What about the night? And I preached a whole sermon one time of what it's like to go through a night season in your life. Let me tell you some things about the night season. Number one, you can't see very well. You can't see very well in darkness. You're like, I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. In the darkness, there's a lot of fear. If you're walking in the dark, you ever, you ever gone in a building? Somebody, somebody, some young person, oh, it was David, David Jr. There you are, buddy. David Jr. came in the church a couple of weeks ago. It was on a Wednesday night. He came over before anybody was here and the lights were off. And when he came back over to the office, he said, man, it's kind of scary in that building. I mean, you know, when you're in the dark, things are a little bit fearful. When the doctor says, you may have, but it's going to be two weeks before we have an answer. You fall into a darkness, a season of darkness, and everything goes black, and, and your, your head spins, and, and you can't function, and you can't think, and, and you're, 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 just, you're, you're lost, and you're, it's like you're in a dark place. And there's a lot of fear in there. Another thing about the darkness is, even if you're with people, there's always a sense of loneliness in the darkness. You may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death with all of your friends, but they can only comfort you so much. What we have to have at that moment is the knowledge that thou art with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, of darkness, thou art with me. We've got to know that. We've got to be confident of that. In the darkness, there's fear. There's confusion. Which way am I supposed to go here? Y'all ever been in a glass house where there are doors everywhere and or one of these buildings they put you in, they turn all the lights off and there are 12 doors in the rooms and you in the room and you've got to fill around and try to find the door to get you out and you're about half freaked out by the time you find it and then you're like, man, why didn't I know that was there? Let me tell you, it's there. There is an open door for you today. Some of you feel like you're in a moment of darkness. You're in a room. You're under confusion. You're all alone. You don't know how you're going to make the next day and the Lord would say to you, the door is right before you. You need somebody to take you by the hand and to lead you to that door. And I remember when I was a kid, I was in the glass house at the fair. 
The glass house wasn't necessarily dark, although it was nighttime, but there were lights out there. and Everything was, was glass, and it was a maze you'd go through. And you'd go into an area, and there would be three doors, and you'd try this door, and it's locked, and you'd try that door, and it's locked, and this door would be open, and you'd, oh, and you'd get this sense of relief. I'm, I'm getting closer to getting out of this place because I'm starting to freak, you know? So I go a little further, and then it's like, oh, this is a dead end. Now what? And you look back. And there are mirrors everywhere, and there's ten of you, and, and it's just weird, you know? And so, God wants to bring you out of your confusion this morning, out of your darkness, by telling you this very simply. While they were striving, while they were struggling, while they were toiling, going through their night season, Jesus was right there on the shore, waiting to reveal Himself in the morning. And again, joy comes in the morning. The promise of that scripture from Psalms is this. There is a morning coming for you. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how hard it is. This too shall pass. There's a morning coming for you. God's going to turn this thing around. Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Here he was, and they see somebody, and they don't know who it is. And Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? Hey, we've been fishing all night. Food is not our issue at the moment. But you know what they did not know? It was their issue. If they're anything like me, if I miss my meal, (laughs) my wife pats me on the shoulder or on the knee and says, Honey, we need to get you something to eat. (laughs) That's right. They've been working all night long. They were hungry. They were frustrated. They were sweaty and nasty feeling. You know, they hadn't been down to the river and had their bath yet. And, 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 and Jesus says, do you have anything to eat? Have you any food? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. Now, a lot of people play on that word right when they preach this. You know, the problem is you've been casting on the wrong side of the boat. God knows you don't know what you're doing. You're just a bunch of dummies. And, uh, but that's not it. it. It was the other side of the boat. It was the right side. They'd been fishing on the left side. And Jesus, being God, knew that the fish were on the right side. And herein, again, is our issue. We can fish and toil and work and strive and do and do and do and do and do and not know that the answer is right beside us. We just haven't stopped to say, Lord, where are the fish? Where are the fish? The Bible says you have not because you ask not are because you ask to consume it upon your own lust. Sometimes we so want something that we beg God for it so long and so hard that we totally miss the fact that we're not asking Him what His will is. You have not because you ask not, or because you ask to consume it on your own lust. And it's when we stop and we set ourselves down and we say, Okay, Lord, I've fought this thing hard enough and long enough What do you want? That things will begin to change. He said, children, have you any food? They said, they answered no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. In this way, he showed himself to them. So watch what happens. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciples... The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. And it it dawned on him. And it dawned on him. So here's the deal. The first thing that I see in this, or the way Jesus showed himself to them, was that he was coming to them and had, had come to them, was in their life, totally unaware, oblivious to them, giving them instruction for life and success. Here he was saying, cast the net over there and you're going to be successful. Cast the net over there and you're going to have sustenance for your life. And they didn't know it was Jesus. And so here's the good news. It's this simple. Listen, you feel like you're going nowhere and you're beating your head against a rock, Dennis. (laughs) That's what we're talking about. We've been talking about. You feel like your circumstance, everybody else is blessed. Somebody else does something and it works. I do it and it doesn't. Hello? Hello? There's only two of you in here who have ever thought that. We all go through that. 
And, and, and so we can get that sense, but the fact of the matter is, all the while, Jesus is incognito working to make you successful in life. And you don't even see it happen. As a matter of fact, some of what you're so upset and frustrated about is a part of Him changing you so you'll be ready for success. They say that, that on an average, that people who win the lottery and win millions of dollars within 18 months are broke again. How does that happen? I'll tell you how. Because it's like, like they say, the reason people are broke is because that's all they can be until they learn how to be something else. And so whatever's poured in their lap, they're going to pour it right. It's going to run right back out. It's just water because they never knew how to handle it. It's the reason they never had it. And so Jesus, though, is coming into our life this morning. He's working on us. He's preparing us for life and for success, for victory. And he's doing some things that are rubbing you raw. I I had to have a conversation not too long ago with somebody, and I said, you've got to understand God put me in your life. I was speaking through a third person, but I said, God put me in your life to rub you raw. No, the Bible says, I quote the scripture a lot, but it says, For God has made from one blood all men to live on all the face of the earth, having pre-appointed their times and their habitations, so that they should seek the Lord, if perhaps they might grope for Him and find Him. The problem is the if. Will you grope for Him when he's put you in a situation that is not comfortable, will you stay there and say, God, you put me here so that I will seek you? Are you going to jump out of the pan and run? And I said, God, put me in your life because our personalities are so different that we rub each other raw. And I'm the pastor of this church, and he brought you here at this time so that you would seek the Lord. what he said and that works both ways it was working on me too and grinding me God is preparing us he's there on the shore watching us toil waiting for us to for morning to come so we realize this ain't working you know what we, we, we always want to save ourselves so we try to do stuff you know God's just standing there like you know when you quit I'm over here So let me read the second thing, and that's all I'm going to share with you today, I think. The second thing. Look at verse 9. And then as soon as they had come to land, they cast their nets, they pulled in so many fish they couldn't hardly get them. As soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, fish laid on it, and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which which you've just caught. Simon Peter went up, And he dragged the net to the land full of large fish, 153. And I have spent long, arduous hours trying to figure out the symbolism of 153, and there ain't nothing. So anyway. (laughs) And uh, although there were so many, the net was not broken. And Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. And so here's the second thing, very simply this. While you're toiling, working, fishing, striving to do what God has called you to do, to be successful, to go to another level, to have a little more, to do a little more, to accomplish a little more, to touch a few more people, to help a few more people, and you don't think you're doing anything, what's happening is He is rewarding you, and He's filling your net, and you don't know what's going on. And you don't get it. And I don't get it. And the day's going to come, Sam, when you're going to stand in heaven... And he's going to look at you and he's going to say, Sam, go get the guitar over there. And it's going to be one of those Nashville handcrafted, one out of a thousand made type guitars. He's going to say, I want you to lead worship for me for a little bit. I believe that's going to happen. I believe that's going to happen. And Sam's going to say, but wait, wait. He's going to say, no. Listen, he's going to say, your net's so full. I know you think you can't drag it, but you need to know this. I'm the one that filled it. And so here's the thing. While we feel like we're going nowhere, there is a great catch for you. God has a great plan for your life, Paris Martin. A great future for you guys. 
Great future for Vicki Pugh. Amen. For Miss Thomasina. God's got great things in store for your future and for you. This woman is amazing. If you know Miss Thomasina, young lady, and her faith is such that she has faith to believe for more of a future than most of our 18-year-olds have. And I mean that. She believes God. And God has something, something in store for you. And you know what? We don't have to be superstars in the kingdom of God. We just need to be pure-hearted. He invited them to fellowship over the blessings, get this, that he had prepared for them all along. And to bring them some of what they had to bring themselves. He told them, y'all bring in, y'all bring in what you have. He told them this, they got there, you get on the shore, he's already cooking food. It's been cooking. Their reward's been there. He's wanting to bless them. He invites them, come on over and have something to eat and bring some of the fish you caught. Knowing that those were his fish too. And so everything that we accomplish and that we do that has value, one day we're going to throw at the feet of Jesus as crowns that He's given us. And we're going to say, man, Lord, all that time, you were right there on the shore. You had my breakfast cooked. I didn't even know I was hungry. I just knew I wasn't happy. And Jesus is going to pat me on the knee and say, Daryl, you just need something to eat. We just need to know this morning, He hasn't left you. He's not gone up and left you. David and Kelly, He hasn't left you. He's right there with you guys, and you know it. Miss Thomasina, you've not been left alone. You're surrounded by people that love you. You're going where people love you. And furthermore, you've got a Holy Ghost with you that if you didn't have anybody, you'd be good. God's not left us alone. And your reward is not in vain. So be faithful to what you're called to. Stick it out. Don't let the devil ask your questions. And what I mean is this. He'll shoot darts into your mind and make you question why. God says you cast that down and you cast your bread upon the water. That means you do what you're called to do. And it will come back to you. On many waves in God's timing. Last week's message, if you were, weren't here, was that there is a time and a season for everything. And that timing is usually just not our time. It's like we said a while ago, God's rarely on time, but He's never late. Amen? What are you believing for? Don't quit. What are you fighting through? What are you struggling? It's going to pass. Hang in there. But keep pressing in. Keep seeking the Lord. That's it. Let's pray. We're going to have an offering here in a minute. Thank you. Lord, I, I just thank you that there's not a soul here this morning that you don't know and love very well. Very much. Very dearly. Sometimes we can feel like we're alone. And we can feel like you're far from us. But you're right here with us. You know us. You, 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 are, you are standing on the shore of our lives. Waiting for us to stop the toiling. To stop trying to save ourselves. And, and what we need is already prepared. It's already on the fire. It's on the left side of the boat. And here you stand, unaware many times to us, guiding and leading us through a life of success and of life and of hope and purpose and joy. And so many times we just don't see that. And so God, I thank you that this morning you're opening our eyes and you're causing us to see. Open our eyes, Lord. And cause us to see. Open our ears. Cause us to hear. We're lost without you. Where would we be without you? We need to know that you're here. We need you to speak. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Michael.
Nietzsche. Thank you, Lord, that he sits here this morning in, in great duress. His heart is broken over circumstances that were out of his control. And he's been, he's been doing a good thing. And somehow the enemy slipped in and, and robbed some things from him. Father, you see Michael. And Lord, I thank you that the Bible says that you are our great reward. You're the reward. And what you're showing Michael through this situation that he's going through is yourself. In this way, Michael, the Lord is showing himself to you. You're going to see the glory of the Lord in a way that you've never seen him before. You're going to come out of this with a knowledge of God that you will use to help others. I believe that. I believe that's what God is doing in your life. Lori, you've been through some things that are not the result of recent circumstances. The Lord says they began in your life when you were very young. And you recalled. And you drew back. God says that you have pressed in and you have sought Him. And you've poured your heart out to Him. And you've turned to Him in your night seasons time and time and time again. And He wants to remind you that He was always there. That He's there this time. And He'll be there next time. Love the Lord with all your heart with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And then you can love your neighbor as yourself. Even if my mother and my father forsake me, the Bible says, God will not leave me. Brother, I don't know you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. don't know you. I don't know if you're a believer or if you're not. Don't want to pry in your life. It's none of my business. But I just feel like God brought you here today. I may never see you again. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what brought you here or who invited you. Yeah. But I, I just, when I greeted you earlier, something just triggered in me. And God's got something for you. And I don't know, I don't know your life. I don't know what it is. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm just me. I don't know anything. But I mean, God just focused on you. There's a, this, is what, this is what I'm sensing in my spirit. There's a spotlight from heaven on you this morning. There's a spotlight from heaven. God has he's found you. He's seen you. He knows where you've been and what you've been through. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable. But he wants you to know, man, that he loves you. He loves you. And you've been through some stuff and we all have, but you've been through more than most people. I just feel that. I don't know. Something deep inside of you. And, and there's, some, there's some, hard, some hardness in there. God just wants to kind of melt that away. and Fill you with love. His love. And the ability to love. In an even greater way than you already do. Because you are a person that loves people. Is that right? You are a person that loves people. And God just wants to let that out. Just as strong as you are physically. God's making you spiritually. It's going to happen, says the Lord. You get ready for it. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stephen? It was an accident that you came here. <laughs> well, 
the Lord says that you are a David. You are a David, and just as David went through some things and did some things that were wrong in the eyes of God, when he came to himself, he was so grieved that he cried out, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Created me a clean heart, O God. And God did, and he restored David to become the king of Israel. And a man after God's own heart. And God says that you are that man. That you are that man. That you turn to him and that he so quickly pulled you out of the mire and set your feet on solid ground. And the reason that he did is because his plan for you is so huge. That if you even got a glimpse of it, it would scare your socks off. My friend, I see you pastoring a very large church one day. I see you pastoring a church with a lot of people who have a lot of brokenness. And God says, He's going to open your mouth and He's going to fill it. And in in the simplicity of words will flow the power of the Spirit. It's, It's going to be as if preaching and teaching is the easiest thing you've ever known. And yet it is going to be so impactful on the lives of people. That you are going to sit in awe and amazement. And the Lord would warn you. To be careful. To always remember and know that it was Jesus on the shore causing the great catch. Be faithful where you are. Be not weary in well-doing. Press in and do what you're called. And God will elevate you in His time. The Bible says that promotion... Is of the Lord. It comes neither from the north, south, east, nor the west. Promotion is of the Lord. And God says that He will promote you in His time. That time is of the essence. And faithfulness in the moment is what He look, looks for. And He's looking for in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we're going to get to that in a moment. Thank you. <laughs> I wish everybody had that spirit. She said, what about the tithe and offering? I said, we'll get to that in a moment. She said, good. Thank you. God bless you. Hilda and Olamidi Adaroba. Can I just say that you guys will never know how dear you are to my heart? How deeply I love you. Your faithfulness, your consistency, your your faithfulness to the Lord amazes me. You're solid as a rock. You're spiritual people. You're people that know how to get a hold of God. Hilda, you're, you're the prayer warrior. Old media is the man with the, the practical sense that is so obviously the wisdom of God. And y'all have blessed me for many years. I, I just want to tell you that. I just want to tell you that I love y'all. Thank you. And man, I could do that now. I'm looking around at all the people here that are so faithful. This is a great church because it's full of great people. Full of great people. So know that Jesus is with you. What you're doing is working. If He called you to it, it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. I'm going to give you one last verse of Scripture, and I'm going to close with that. There's a verse in the book of Job. No? Yes. Job? Job. (laughs) Chapter 8. 
said, if you would seek the Lord, if you were pure and upright, surely now God would hear and would arise for you and prosper your rightful habitation. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end will greatly increase. If you are pure and upright, surely now God will arise for you and prosper your rightful end. Though your beginning was small, it's going to greatly increase. If you're here this morning and you're not.